give all glory and praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Barak Adam. Okay, that's the Most High name in Hebrew. Okay, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, His Son, the Messiah, who you know as Christ. His name is Yahweh Shah. All right. So we're going to go ahead up and go ahead and get into this because brothers need edify. So go ahead and bring out what you got. We're going to bring out the brother. We to told this brother right here that uh, everybody can't get the kingdom. Only the children of Israel get the kingdom. So we got to go in the Bible and prove it. What evidence? Read what you got. The book of Romans, chapter 9, and verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. But God loves everybody. What's up with that? Give me the book of, uh, give me uh, Psalms 147, 19. Now we're going to see who God is dealing with. All right? That's what we're going to see. Who is God dealing with? Is he dealing with everybody, the whole world, or is he just dealing with the children of Israel the same way that I stated, right? I say God only dealing with the children of Israel. So let's prove it. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, and verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. He showed his word unto Jacob. Jacob is the twelve tribes of Israel. The father of the twelve tribes, read. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He have what? He hath not dealt so with any nation. He have not dealt so with any other nation. Let's read that again from the top. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, and verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. He showed his Bible unto Jacob. Jacob's sons is the Israelites, the 12 tribes. Jacob have 12 tribes, which you, that's where you get the 12 tribes of Israel from. He showed his Bible, his word unto Jacob. Read. His statutes and his judgments. His statutes and his judgments. His laws and commandments. Right? To Israel. Unto Israel. He hath not dealt so. He hath what? He hath not dealt so with any nation. He hath not dealt so with any other nation. Read. And as for his judgments... They have not known them. And for the judgments of the Most High God, the heathen, the other nations outside of Israel don't know his judgments. That's why they do all the killing. That's why they go against us. Do all these atrocities to us. Right? They get off with it. Right? They don't get punished for it. Right? Because they don't know God's judgment. But God got a judgment waiting prepared for him when the sun come back. You see that? That's when they're going to feel it. And that's when we're going to be happy and happy and glad. Those who keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You see that? So he showed his word unto Jacob the book of uh, Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Amos 3 verse 1, right? Because he showed his word, the Bible, unto Jacob. He have not dealt so with any other nation. Read what you got. The book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Who is God speaking to? O, o children, children of Israel. Israel. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying... You only have I known. No, he know everybody on the earth. You only have I known. No, he know all races. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So he just said to the Israelites, you only have I known. We only who God known, right? Of all the families of the earth. All That means all races of the earth. He only care know the children of Israel. That's why we get punished for not keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. That's the reason why we are in captivity today because our forefathers, remember when they came out of the land of Egypt, they started, Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments. Our people was down there with a gold and calf worship dependent by the time Moses came back down. Moses threw the Ten Commandments down on the ground, mad, because the Lord just brought us out of, of the land of Egypt through the river. So he lifted the, the ocean up to that, that water. He walked past it and he killed the whole army of the Egyptians who had us in captivity. Remember, Moses was going over there saying, free my people, right? So we, when he brought us over, and he was safe after God killed the Egyptians, Moses would go get the Ten Commandments from the Most High, and all people was down there worshiping. They created a golden calf and started worshiping the golden God after we just seen the Most High power. You see that? Remember, you already brought that to my church. I'm a jealous God, right? So he punished us as a whole group of people, put us in slavery, captivity. That's why we're shipped off to all nations because of that. Because we broke his law, statutes, and commandments. The other nations ain't getting punished. Why is that? Because they weren't given no law, statutes, and commandments. Only the children of Israel can break the law, statutes, and commandments. The other nations could do whatever the hell they want to do. You see that? Because they weren't given no laws. They weren't given boundaries. We was given boundaries. 
Read your piece up, Hebrew. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, and verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. What did God teach us? Statutes, statutes and, and judgments. judgments. What did God teach the Israelites? Statutes, statutes and, and judgments. judgments. Even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye shall do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. And do what? And, and do, do them. them. Do the law, statutes, and commandments. Read. For this is your wisdom and your understanding. This is our wisdom and understanding. This book is our wisdom and understanding, but a lot of times our people read it and can't relate to it because they don't know how to read it. You see that thing? I used to be the same. I used to pick it up, read it when I was in the world, couldn't understand, especially the names. When I read the names, I skip all over it. I'm trying to grab something that I can understand. You see that? And that's what a lot of our people do. So we just close it up. That ain't for me. That's a white man's book. How many times you hear that? That's a white man's book. You see that? This is our book. The Caucasian man stole this book from us and used it against us. You see that thing? That's the truth of the whole matter. Read. Uh, and your uh, understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath the Most High God so nigh unto them? As the Lord your God, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. So we can call on the Most High, ask him for anything, and we get it. But it's the thing. If you're in the midst of sin, and you go on your knees and pray to the Most High, you ain't going to receive nothing. He ain't giving you nothing because you're not an obedient child. So how do you be obedient? By keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments. It's going to always go back to the law, statutes, and commandments. Read the book of John, chapter 9, and verse 31. Now we know that the Most High God heareth not sinners. What did the Bible say? Now we know that the Most High God heareth not sinners. So God don't hear sinners. And a lot of us is in the midst of sin. But when something go wrong, when we find ourselves in a bad predicament, we get on our knees and pray for help, right? But meanwhile, our prayers don't go past the dome. You see that? So he's not hearing our prayers. You see that? That's what that, that's what goes, that's what that's talking about. If we're in the midst of sin, he don't hear us. Give me the book of Romans 7 and 1. Let's see how to get your prayers answered, okay? Because he said, the Lord, he don't hear sinners. And a lot of us sin all the time. And a lot of us sin without even knowing we're in sin, right? We're surrounded by sin. Read what you got. Let's see how to get our prayers answered. The book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Know ye not, brethren, for the Lord speak to the children that knows his laws. So you must be keeping his laws in order to communicate with the Most High. You see that? So he just said, I, I, the Lord does not speak to sinners. But he said, he speaks to the children that know his law, that are doing his law. You see that? So you got to be doing his law to ask for something. You can't be in the midst of sin. You're in the midst of sin. You ain't going to get nothing. Ain't nothing. He ain't going to do nothing for you. But if you keep obeying him by keeping his law, and commandments, then he can answer your prayers. Then you're going to see some difference. Then you're going to get that fear in you. Read. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. The law hath dominion over us as long as we live it. From generation to generation to generation, the law, we are up under the law. Only the children of Israel, the whole world is not up under the law. Remember that? Read your piece up, Hebrew. The book of Sirach, chapter, nine, uh, chapter uh, 18, and verse 23. Before thou prayest, prepare thyself. Before you pray, prepare yourself. Don't just, all right, I'm going to go pray. Just get on the knees and just whatever come to, come to your head, you just shout it out to him. The, he, the Bible just said, when you pray, prepare yourself to pray. Think about what you want to ask the most high for before you get down on your knees and ask him. Read. And be not as one that tempteth the Lord. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end and the time of vengeance when he shall turn away his face. Right? Because that's what a lot of us are waiting for. We're waiting for that return. Right? That's what we're waiting for. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 24. 1524 Hebrew, 1524, right? Now we're going to get a little bit the deeper how God don't like the other nations, all right? Because we just read Romans 9, 13. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. The Caucasians will be the Edomite that the Bible speaks of. That's who they are, all right? 
Read what you got, Hebrew. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What color is that written in? When it's written in red, that means the Messiah is speaking himself, right? Exactly. Read that part again, Hebrew. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. No, he sent to everybody. The house of Israel. No, he sent to all races. The house, the house of, of Israel. Israel. The Messiah said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because Israel is only the ones that's lost. They the ones walking around not knowing who they are, calling themselves after a country, right? They, we call ourselves after a country. I'm, I'm African American, right? Yeah. We, this is America. They call America. They say I'm American, right? They say I'm African. Those two different type, two continents. You see that? So when you say I'm African American, you say I'm African which is the continent over there, and you American, which is over here. A lot of our people never went to Africa. You see that thing? African American are names after the two Spaniards, Spaniards, people who conquered this land. Right? So you got American comes from uh, America, Af American Retribution, right? That's the name of the, 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 the Spaniard who conquered this name. It was two of them. American Retribution, which is American. He named it American from that. The other one you get Africa from Leo Scipio Africanus. He was another Spaniard. They both conquered this land together. And they named the land after themselves. You see that? And what did they do with the slaves that they, they got over here? That when we came over here, we was in slavery, right? Did we not get branded? What is our last names? After the slave master, right? So they, they, they not only call them the countries after they after their names who conquered it, but they also get the people that's in the land, they give them the last name. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 49 and verse 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. Now, the people who conquered us think that they're, this is going to last forever. They think they're going to be on top and just going to rule with their feet up forever. But what do the Bible say? They call down. their lands after their own names. What do they do? They call their lands after their own names. What, they, what happened when they conquered America? They call their lands after their own names. That's in the Bible. They call the names of the, us, African Americans, after the country that they, they conquered. That's written. Everything is written in here. Everything. You got to understand. What you understand that the Most High is the smartest of everything. Once we can understand that, then we can be able to understand this word. Right? Because I mean, literally, everything is in here. Any question you got, we can answer it right straight from the Bible. What about Israel? What about the Native people that we call Israel? The Israelis of the days. Let's get Revelations to a nine. You see that picture over there at the end? Yep. Them the people that's in Israel, right? That's what the Bible says. Oh, read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, and verse 9. Because they say they, they're the Jews, right? We're going to read it. We're going to read it. Because yeah. they say they're Jews, right? Let's see what the Bible says. The it's book of Revelation, you. chapter 2, and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. The real Jews is in tribulation and poverty. That's what he said. Read that again from the top, Hebrew. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. But we're rich. Right? I know thy works. Read that again. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. and poverty, but thou art rich. Even though we're in poverty, right? We're in tribulation all the time, right? We're still rich. Why are we rich? That's a question to you. Why are we rich as a people, even though we're on a low estate? That's right. We're the chosen people, and we got a chance to get the kingdom of heaven. Because all the covenants belongs to us. That's why we're rich. This earth, these things in this earth don't mean nothing. You see what I'm saying? Because once we get our kingdom, that's going to really mean something. You see that? Read. 
And I know the blasphemy of them. You know what the word blasphemy means? It means lies. Read. Of them which say they are Jews. And I know the lies of them which say they are Jews but they are and sinners. are not. But they are sinners. But are the synagogue of Satan. Who are they? The synagogue, the synagogue of, Satan. of Satan. Did the Bible just say they're not Satan? They're, the, they're Satan. That's what he said. That's what I brought up at the beginning of our conversation. That's right. Now give me three and nine, Hebrew. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, and verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews but and are not. not, but do lie. That's all they do is speak lies. Give me Jeremiah chapter 14, 2. Jeremiah 14, 2. Right? Man, we got to put that on you. We got to spread that. Because I said that. Go to, go right? to Revelation chapter we, 2. But we're going to find out who the real Jews are. Now we're going to get on who the yeah. real Jews Since he said they're not the Jews, now let's find out who the real Jews are. Read what you got. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Judah mourning, and the gates thereof language. Judah is in mourning. The real Jews are in mourning. The gates language. The gates refer to our leaders. Judah have no leaders. Martin Luther King, Martin Garvey, Malcolm X, they all they gone. Right? We ain't got no leaders. Who's our leader? Our leader is the Christ. Read. They are black unto the ground. What we'll color are the real Jews? They are black ah, unto the ground. I, them Caucasian men, they, they're red, right? They're pink. Right? Down south, they call them rednecks. Right? We gotta get from the top, people. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, and verse 2. Judah mourning, and the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. We ain't, we ain't in Jerusalem no more. We spread it all throughout the world. You see that? And now we got imposters in our land. Exactly. Right? Now all this came to be about because we as a people, all 12 tribes, broke God's laws, statutes, and commandments. We must know why we are in punishment because this is a punishment. We can't be in punishment and don't know what we're being punished for. You see that? We must know why we're in this condition, why this happened to us so we can get it right. The only way to get it right is to come back to God's laws, statutes, and commandments. You see that? That's why it's important to keep his law, statutes, and commandments. Because if you're not, when Messiah comes back and whoever is not keeping his laws, is getting put to death. You're not getting the key. You're only coming back for obedient children. The obedient children that's keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. That's the only people who's going back with him. You. you got that? That's how important this is, man. Because everybody wants the kingdom. That's what everybody say. Everybody wants the kingdom of heaven. But ain't nobody putting the work into it. See that? That's like a person going to college. Everybody wants that, that that degree, right? This is saying everybody wants that uh that doctor's degree, but ain't nobody trying to go to college and get it. This is what our people do. Everybody wants the kingdom, but we ain't trying to do what God said to do to get it. Right? And let me go bring out some laws. Give me first preach and preach at first. Oh, the book of Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 24. Who gave Jacob for spoil? Who gave the children of Jacob for spoil? The twelve tribes, read. And Israel to the robber. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. You should have came over here before you hop on the bus. Do you? That's what our people like to do. Throw off vanity when they leave it. Like to run. But read, read that again from the top. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, and verse 24. Who gave Jacob for spoil? And Israel to the robbers. Did not the Lord? He against whom? We have sin. Read that again so the brother can know why we are in captivity. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, and verse 24. Who gave Jacob for a spoil? Who gave Jacob for a spoil? And Israel to the robbers. And Israel to the robbers. Who, who did this? Who gave us up like this? Did not the Lord? Who? Did not the Lord? Did not the Lord do this? He did this. He put us in slavery because we broke his laws, that's his commandments. It wasn't because the other nations were stronger than us, was more powerful, more mightier. It wasn't none of that thing. It's because we broke his laws and he punished us for it. Because guess what? You got kids? So, okay, if you tell your kids, just say they're at the age of eight, right? You tell them, or they being bad at school, for example. They being bad at school. Now, you already told them, you got on them about it, don't be bad no more. Now, I'm just warning you verbally, okay? You, you kind of up your, up your tone, right? And you tell them, they go right back to school, the next day you get a phone call from the teacher, they're cutting up again. 
you're going to have to punish them some type of way, right? Whether you whip them dick behind, make them stand in the corner, right? You see that? So you got to whip them. You got to chastise them. That's what the Most High is doing to us as a whole nation. He put the other nations over them to, to beat us down, right? Read uh, the, the book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither despise not the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise it. He did this for a reason. So we can't say, oh, no, but this is why this is happening to us. Even though a lot of people say that, right? Why is this happening to us? Why we can't get nowhere? Why we can't grow as a people? Read that again from the top. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected. For whom the Lord what? For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected. That's why we being corrected, because he loves us. Right? Now, just say, for example, your kids, both of them is out playing with the uh, kids in the neighborhood, right? The kids in the neighborhood, they go out and jump another little boy, right? And you're going to take all the same as two actually with your kids, which is two, and another two, right? And they jumped in a kid. And you're going to punish all four of them? Well, in modern day, we, don't, you know, we, we, we punish our own because we love our own. See that we can't put our hands on another anybody else's kids, right? But as a unit, that's how it used to be, right? And back in the day, you know what I'm saying? No, the village raised a, yeah, the village raised a, a child, but nowadays it don't, it don't go like that, you know what I'm saying? But read that part again from the top, Hebrew. Oh, 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 read your piece up. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 20 and verse 4. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you. So the Lord our God goes with us. With the children not keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments. Any bad children out here that's not keeping his laws, he's not dealing with them. Read. To fight for you. What did the Lord do? To fight, fight for you. The Lord fights for us. He got all type of angels. If you imagine just sitting here and you see somebody messing with somebody, you go, go check him. Go pick the person who messing with my children's place. He got power like that. He got angels. Angels, you know, the power that angels have, they can be in different bodies, come in different shapes and sizes and form. They can come in a form that can scare the, the wits out of them after you have a heart attack. You see what I'm saying? They can come in a little, a genuine old lady with a whole bunch of strength. And have them walk down a little alleyway and a robber try to run up on her because he can overtake her because he got the purse out. Meanwhile, the angel is an angel and it just tear the, the dude up. Have him in the hospital, the wheelchair came, came, came move around. You see that? We, a lot of our people underestimate God's power. Read. Uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 78, and verse 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger. What did the Lord do? He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation. And what? Wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. By sending who? By sending evil angels among them. The Most High God is in control of everything. If he built up the earth and the heavens, don't you think he got control of it? He let these other nations roll over us because, right, like I always say, they broke the law, statutes, and commandments. So an obedient child, and if you really fear the most high, you down with him? Like, you know, how people say, I'm down for my niggas, I'm down for my boys, I'm down for my homies. If you truly down for the most high, you won't have no problem keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, which we're about to get into a little later. Read your piece up, Hebrew. Uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 18 and verse 27. A wise man will fear in everything. We ain't allowed to buy nor sell, nor kindle, nor fire on the Sabbath day. So we can't buy on the Sabbath day. You didn't know that, but now you know. You see that? We ain't allowed to be out here spending money. You know, we can't go out and buy goods from the grocery stores, buy some clothes, go shopping. We can't do none of that on the Sabbath day, because guess what? The Lord made the heaven and earth. And on the, uh, the uh, seventh day, he rested. So this is the day of rest. We got to rest like the moon's eye rest. You see that? The only person that's out here, supposed to be out here, that's in righteousness, is us doing, speaking the word. Right? Because this is church. Church is not a building that you go in like they got set up. Because the most I don't dwell there. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay. All right, give me the Sabbath day. Give me Exodus 8, 20 and 8, Hebrew. Got it. Uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember what? The Sabbath day, day to keep, keep it holy. holy. Six days shalt thou labor 
and do all thy work. Six lay, six days you got to labor and do the work. You got six days to go to work, get your money up. You got six days to mow your lawn, cut your hedges, plow the snow, whatever it is, you got six days to do that, read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. We should what? Not do any work. On the Sabbath day we cannot do any work, read. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant. None of the people you know should be doing work on the Sabbath, read. Nor thy cattle. Even the cattle, the animals, this is a day of rest for them also, right? You can't have the cattle out there doing work on the Sabbath day because we ain't supposed to do work, read. Nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord Yahweh made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord Yahweh blessed it, uh, blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Not so power and mighty because he said that the, even the fish, the whale, shark, all the animals in the water, whether it's the rivers, the ocean, the lakes, rest on the Sabbath as well. You see that thing? Could you imagine that? We don't, we see, we, a lot of us undermine the power of the Most High God. We undermine it because we so used to roam in this, this world that we only, our mind capacity fits this world, but it don't fit spiritual. The only way we can become spiritual is by keeping the law, right? Because the law is spiritual. Give me that in Romans 14, 14, 7. Uh, the book of Romans, chapter 7, and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. The what? The law, the law is, is spiritual. spiritual. The law is spiritual. But I am carnal, sold under sin. We carnal and we sold under sin. We got nothing but sin around us, right? But does that mean we can't be spiritual? No. We can be spiritual in this carnal mind. You see what I'm saying? Give me the book of John 4, 24 real quick, Hebrew. John 4, verse 24, because he said the law is spiritual, right? But let's see how you serve God all together, all right? Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 4, and verse 24. The Most High God is a spirit. God himself is a spirit, read. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit, so those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. So we must worship him in spirit. So we just read that the law is spiritual, right? The law is spiritual. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Give me the book of Psalms 119, 142. Uh, the book of uh, Psalms chapter 119 and 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And thy what? And thy law is the truth. Read that again from the top, Hebrew. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. Remember, we got, if we order to serve the Most High God, 